A college should be a great moral lighthouse, sending a clear and steady light upon all subjects that pertain to the well-being of man and the world to come. It is a time of vast change. The country was filled with opportunity for the American people to create a better life for themselves and their children. And the need for quality education would never be greater. President Smith really sets a course for the college. He's going to have to find and bring to Plainfield a first faculty. And that first faculty will be vital to the success of this institution from its opening day forward. Joining the nation's love affair with trains, Plainfield College changes its name to Northwestern and moves to Naperville, connecting a growing community with a growing college, laying the cornerstone for Old Main on May 17, 1870. What's amazing about Old Main is that it's such a substantial building for such a small school at the outset. I mean, it's the vision of what this college was going to be it gives us a sense of what the evangelicals who built it thought the future was going to be like, and that future was a good one. At home in its new location, the college and its graduates experience success. James L. Nichols, a self-made man, graduates in 1880 and begins a publishing company where he writes Safe Methods of Business and is appointed chair of the college's commerce department. One of his students, Peter Crayler, would go on to lead an international furniture company, Crayler Manufacturing, bringing jobs and prestige to Naperville. As a new century approaches, colleges and universities across the country are beginning to expand beyond their own walls to afford students a larger view of the world. Under the leadership of President Herman Kikofer, the college would build, adding two new buildings critical for the future of the college. The Carnegie Library and Goldspone Science Center then become the emblem, really, of North Central entering into this new era of what it means to be a, an institution of higher learning. Continuing to pursue the highest of standards, Northwestern hires its fifth president in 1916, Edward Everett Rawl. President Rawl uh, is a wonderful choice because he comes in as an evangelical, so he's got that training, he's got the deep roots and connections to evangelical families across the region, which is so important for a president at the college. And also, he has the credentials with a PhD in education, he's got the credentials of a modern college. Most of his success, though, I mean, to some degree, rests on the fact that he's a tremendous fundraiser, able to tap into funds for the college in good times and in bad. The spirit of the Roaring Twenties was marked by a general feeling of anything is possible. And at Northwestern College, extracurricular activities and student life takes on new meaning. President Rawl envisioned a building that could accommodate the entire college community for chapel services and fine performances. Through a generous donation by brothers G.A. and Henry and Annie Pfeiffer in honor of their mother, Barbara Pfeiffer Memorial Hall is dedicated in 1926. Much like today, colleges and universities sports teams were the talk of the town. And for Northwestern College, a winning football team would be the catalyst for a name change. What I love about the story of the name change is that Northwestern College get mixed up with Northwestern University. Northwestern college has a better football team than Northwestern University and wins more of their games. And you can see that people are getting unhappy with being written up in the newspaper. And they'll just say Northwestern. And they won't say college or university. And the folks at, at Northwestern College out here in Naperville are getting a, a little annoyed when they've won their game. And the assumption is they've lost their game because Northwestern has lost their game to some college and they don't want that kind of confusion anymore. And the confusion ended in 1926 as Northwestern College became North Central College. The sports rage continued. President Rawl was ambitious. He imagined a field house with an indoor track, basketball and tennis courts, and a swimming pool. Once again, he reached out to the Pfeiffer family to build a state-of-the-art athletic facility, this time named for Henry's wife, Annie Murner it would be the second largest indoor facility in the state of Illinois. As the depression tightened its grip on the nation in the 1930s, North Central would weather it well in no small part 
because of the careful stewardship of President Rawl. Men from both Naperville and North Central would join the war effort. After the war is over, the student body is going to be dramatically expanded by returning veterans. So you've got people who have had the experience of war coming back into classrooms, and their attitude towards education is going to be very different from your traditional 18 to 21-year-olds. Returning veteran Dr. Hal Henning picked up as a coach where he left off as a student athlete beginning what has been coined the second golden age for Cardinal men's swimming, leading his teams to numerous national championships. And in 1960, two North Central College swimmers, Dick Blick and Ruben Roca, would participate at the Summer Olympic Games. Dick Blick would win the gold medal for the United States in the 4x200 meter relay. Joining the team in the early 60s would be Byron Ware. The first African-American member to join the swim team, Ware would help the Cardinals capture another national championship. A strong commitment to science by North Central College would help three outstanding alumni shape what we know today. Carl Gammertsfelter's solid foundation would place him at the University of Chicago in 1942 to be a part of the first nuclear chain reaction known as the Manhattan Project. Later, Dr. Gammertsfelter would become a pioneer in radiation research. Joseph Edward Rall, the son of President Rall, would earn both a medical degree and doctoral degree in medicine. His passion for science would lead him to become an internationally renowned research scientist and administrator at the National Institute of Health. He also inspired the college's annual Rall Symposium for Undergraduate Research, named in his honor. From the science labs of Goldspawn Hall in the early 1940s, a young scientist, Mildred Rebstock, began a journey that would lead to a life-changing discovery. Dr. Rebstock would be given much of the credit for developing a process to create a synthetic antibiotic. This discovery would speed up production and would have a dramatic impact on the world's health. With a changing student body, President C. Harvey Geiger would establish the first full-time chaplain position and hire alumnus Reverend George St. Angelo. Reverend St. Angelo was someone who was very much affected by his experience in World War II. So I think what he brought to North Central was a very strong streak of, uh, of a need for students to be involved and aware of the world around them and the ways in which they as evangelical students could shape and reshape that world and influence that world. I have a dream. He spoke right over there on the uh, night that he visited, and we had it open for the community, and a, a door slammed. <laughs> yeah, Shelley was president, he was sitting over here, and I was sitting over there, and, and King saw us both jump, and, he, and King just turned around, you guys aren't used to it, are you? <laughs> In the summer of 1964, Myrner Fieldhouse would once again return to glory with a renovation that included the first artificial track surface in the United States. Shortly after that, a young Al Carius joined the faculty, bringing an era of personal best to North Central. As the nation struggled with unrest, 1968 marked a time of great crisis for the college. There was a sudden loss of both financial and enrollment support and mounting pressure to build a new science facility. The college would fight to keep the doors open. Important decisions would be made to ensure the college's survival. President Schilling manages to negotiate these tough years with the help of administrators, faculty, students, board of trustees, as well as alumni who really rally around the college to make sure that it's going to remain a viable institution. Yes, the same name that it had in 1968, but it is a very different place than it had been before. In 1975, North Central would turn to a different type of president in Gale Swing, bringing with him a strong business acumen. As the college continued to redefine itself, President Swing turned to the community and created continuing adult education classes, weekend college, and started the graduate programs at North Central. Coach Al Carius and his cross-country team would win their first NCAA national championship, setting a standard of excellence that would carry on into present day. 
President Swing's administration would have the necessary business savviness to lay the foundation to renew the college. On May 18, 1991, Harold R. Wilde would be inaugurated as the ninth president. He would build on the efforts of Gail Swing and begin an aggressive plan to move North Central forward. President Wilde is someone who comes in, brings together a lot of different pieces of things that people across campus had been looking to have in, in the president. President Wilde would begin with a full renovation of Old Main, returning it to the centerpiece of the college. After a mere decade of leadership, Wilde would lead the college to a new curriculum, construct four major buildings, and increase the endowment five-fold, setting the stage for greater things to come. With great vision, the Wentz Concert Hall and Fine Arts Center was dedicated, bringing the resurgence of the music program full circle from its dismantling in the 1970s to an award-winning program and world-class facility in 2008. As the first decade of the 21st century would come to a close, North Central College would begin one of the largest buildings since Old Main. The new 100,000 square foot residence hall and recreation center nestled next to Myrner Field House, blending in perfectly with the classic feel of the college, built from the ground up to be green, efficient, and everlasting. As North Central College celebrates its 150th anniversary, the college has remained true to its mission, from the first days as Plainfield College to not only educate students, but provide them with a moral lighthouse to guide students as they navigate the world around them. And yet, at a time of great success and reason to celebrate, there is much work to be done to secure the college's success into the future. North Central College, 150 years, a promising start. <laughs>